Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 430. 430. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. Becky, the owner, is heading to the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser as we speak uh, for her March 1st, or she was on the plane today, mm -hmm. uh, the March 1st inaugural adventure. Yes. For the two, their two night, uh, two night experiences. So um, if you're looking to book the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, they will be able to answer your questions, plus save you some time on the phone, because I think that's the only way you can book it, yeah. right? Yeah, apparently on the it phone. takes quite a while to, uh, mm. to get through. Now, speaking of the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, we were invited to a media preview. We were able to be on board the Halcyon, the ship, for about four hours. And in those four hours, we did a lot and I mean a lot of activity. Uh, look, look how stupid I look. You there. are so happy. <laughs> you know, look at you know how happy what? you are. The way I look, and I'm not, like, my mask was caught in my hair. Oh, so. is that what that was? Yes. I think it's just joy no. to be able to be on the start. No, cruiser. I had the mask stuck in my hair, so I moved my head toward you. <laughs> like, I couldn't get it out I quickly. I quite like that seeing that big <laughs> smile. Anyway, here we are. We're looking at some of Disney's uh, footage here, the official footage of uh, entering the, uh, you know, the area where you check in. In, and now you're in one of these pods here, ready to go the up. The launch pod. The launch pod, mm -hmm. correct. You're, you're launching now, and there it is. There is the Halcyon we're about to board. This is not our footage. But this is. Here we yes. are. We are now, have, have now in boarded. In the atrium. In the atrium, that's right. And this was, um, we, we did, a, you mentioned we did a lot. We sure did. And I think uh, this would be like the captain's reception, which would normally be, I think, around 4.30 or so. C correct, because normally when you enter the Halcyon, they take you right to your room and show you that. We're going to show you that in just a little later. This is sort of the order that we experienced it in. And this is Awani and... Uh, oh yes, Awani. She speaks a uh, Hadiz, sort of like a uh, Jabba the Hutt. Huh. So yeah, you know, you have these characters who will interact with you. Um, it's interesting to watch voyage. her talk, you know, how her eyes and her lips move. Very interesting character she I, is. It, but also is part of the entertainment in mm -hmm. the Crown of Coralia uh, dining room. With uh, with Gaia, and here is Captain Keevan here, the captain of the Halcyon. And we saw her uh, probably more than just about anybody as throughout, far as yeah, the throughout characters. The, the entire adventure. But um, you could see a different characters. Like you know, it's interesting. I guess everybody's uh, story essentially. Uh, is different. Right, you the might choices a, you make. And you might see a lot of Chewbacca, or you might see a little bit of Chewbacca. So it just depends on how your how your experience goes so we're about to take a very quick look at the uh Chandrilla collection shop here and all the merchandise now this was not opened when we did our tour but we did get a chance later on this night to interview uh, a merchandise representative mm -hmm. and we'll link to that at the end of the show a lot of really nice looking merchandise there and i was told there were 60 plus items mm -hmm. and of course some of that will be in sh on shop disney and here is gaia now we're going to see her perform a little bit later but uh, I must say, she has a very special drink that she's holding there. It's called the Gaia Special. That's what that's It's what a she drink said. of one, and for her only. <laughs> I took this video, like, I was right <laughs> next to her, and I just thought... She was she was really terrific and also a, fa a fantastic singer. Yeah, all the characters were outstanding. And now we're going to take a quick look into the Sublight Lounge here, and I see some uh, sabak being played. I you know I wish that we had had time to kind of get a drink and just kind of hang out there. I th think that would have been a lot of fun. Yes, this is definitely a place where I would have spent some time, mm -hmm. certainly. I like the atmosphere here much better than uh, Oga's, actually. And, you know, it's the drinks looked very interesting. We did get a chance mm -hmm. to try one of the drinks at dinner. Plus, we had a chance to interview the, uh, the beverage, beverage. Uh, representative, and we'll yes. link to that at the end of the show as well. And that's a, we tried the Hoth icebreaker. We had that at, uh, with dinner. And I was going to order that Cloud of Bespin because that's the one uh, rum-based drink. I thought mm -hmm. that looked very good, but I we like just rum. didn't quite have the... The time, the time to right. do that but uh, it looks like you know a very nice atmosphere here in the bar and you had printed out the sample itineraries mm -hmm. if guests were going to um you know have a couple of days on the ship really from like 7 a.m to 11 p.m you're scheduled i mean you don't have to do everything but it gives you an idea 
Um, but like the sabak, maybe you'd have four to five, and then cocktails from five to five thirty. Right, and usually the action is done for the day around ten o'clock, but the bar is open till about one. So there, you know, after all that happens, you can kind of relax in the bar. We're about to have, by the way, a toast to the exciting adventure that's about to uh, unfold here. And I'm not even sure what that drink was. Do we know? We do not know. <laughs> I have no idea. It's it, blue. You know, it's like a blue milk cocktail. It was uh, no alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's that much I remember. So next we're on uh, deck five here, taking a look at one of the cabins. It's uh, cabin 202, a standard cabin, and uh, Sarah here was uh, showing us around. She was she was terrific. And she gave us a tour of the room, which includes, uh, of course, the um, the bunk beds and the bed, uh, pull down bed, and, uh, and more than that. So here she is to discuss the room. Welcome to your sleeping quarters while on the Halcyon Star Cruiser. This will be where your sleeping berths are stored, as well as all of the amenities you'll need throughout your stay. You have the storage compartments, as well as the refreshers. You're able to use any of the amenities listed inside of the room, as well as the viewport, one of my personal favorites. I've been on a few different deep space passenger vessels, and not all of them have a viewport for every room, like the Halcyon does. It's something I'm personally very proud of. However, I understand that you might not want to view space as well as the interesting details going on outside <laughs> since you might be in a blockade for some reason. So if you'd like to close it at any time, you're welcome to press the button. And if it's too bright, the stars can be very bright this time of year, especially as we pass by our coral worlds of Cinderella going to bad too. So you're able to close it if you'd like. We also have the map as well as different ways to change the console screens for whatever you might need. We have the home phone which connects to these passenger services available 24 hours a day. This is also where you'll talk to our home droid D3. She's one of my favorite people on the entire ship and every time you talk to D3 you get a sense of home as she created by our founder Shug Tabor himself. So she knows the ship better than anyone else. Would you like to talk to her? Sure. Absolutely. Please press the button to activate and make sure to speak loud and clearly. We just have your data band right here to connect. Seems as if she might be able to get a hold. Hold. My goodness. Contact me if anything changes. Oh, it's a new passenger. Hello, and welcome aboard. Hello, D3. These are the travelers. Why, yes. I am D309. I'm so flattered that you already know my name. Is now a good time to discuss your journey? Yes. Wonderful. I am the logistics droid of the Halcyon, and I'll be available to you here during your journey. Have you used a droid link panel before? No. Don't worry. It's easy. This is where we'll talk throughout your journey. And I cannot see into your cabin, as this is an audio-only link, so please speak clearly. So tell me, what brings you to our treasured ship? The D309, that's only um, available for a limited test time. I don't know if it, you know, then will return. Right. Um, so we're just looking a little bit more um, around. Again, this is a standard cabin. H2O uh, available yes. in space. I love that. And uh, so there's also a couple of different uh, suites. There's a galaxy class suite that sleeps four with one bedroom. And then the grand captain suite that sleeps eight um, with a, they call it a posh living space and a <laughs> second bathroom. And then like you get three windows. More views into space, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so we know people who will be on all of the configurations. Yes. So it'll be very interesting to see how they all, uh, they right. all work S out. Since we haven't uh, seen them yet in person. And you can see everything is branded. So it's uh, very nicely done. And I'm wondering if they're going to sell those towels and like the bathrobes and such. Anything with the, you know, with the logo on it. Because you know the, the towels will otherwise go home, but then they'll probably charge for them. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that before. Remember the mm -hmm. Spider-Man suite at the Art of Marvel oh, right. Hotel? Everybody mm -hmm. wanted that. And they, I think they did sell that Spider-Man robe at one point. Uh, oh, yeah, right, in the gift shop. So this is the pull-down bed, which, like, for me, I'm 5'4", it would be fine. But if you're, like, six feet, you're probably not going to be able to sleep in that. But in the bunk beds, probably, yes, because we have friends who are taller 
who have who have laid down in them. I actually really like the room. I think the room is very nice. I, I think it'd be fun to kind of be in there and look at the space going by and maybe talking to the droid and just uh, you know immersing in the whole the whole Star Wars galactic star cruiser atmosphere. Well, the, I think that just the bedding looks very nice. Like it looks very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have not laid down in it, but I'm sure for the price, it should be comfortable. <laughs> So now we're moving on. We're on our way. I think we're about on our way to do some lightsaber training. And this was the first time I ever had done lightsaber training. And we have got stormtroopers who I guess were leading the way. Now, while we're looking at this footage, this is Disney's footage. We actually did the lightsaber building, the Savi's lightsaber building. Oh, that's building. right. And I thought that was a more, I don't know, a more emotional experience mm-hmm. than this was. I did enjoy this, but uh, I don't know. I thought uh, I thought that was a, a better experience for me. Uh, you know, I actually did like the lightsaber uh, building. So this was okay. I think it was, it went a little long for me. I thought it was really interesting at first, you know, because mm-hmm. you've got the, I forget what they call it, like a training, you know, it's hitting your you, lightsaber, right? Right. Well, um, you, you're I, trying to hit the, the uh, light. Well, or the light was hitting me. So, um, but I thought it was fun for maybe like the first 15 to 20 minutes, but by the end, well, I, you know I why that know. is though, because there was so many people in the room and when you did that, you had to do every activity four to five times. That's why it went so long and you had to, so everybody would get mm-hmm. a turn. But again, if you had a smaller group, I think this would go, uh, go along much faster. I mean, it, what we did was a taste of right. the Star Wars uh, Galactic Star Cruiser. We did a lot, but um, not exactly as you would do exactly. if you were actually paying for it and doing it for two days. So now we're looking at bridge training here. And when you go to the bridge the first time, you sort of get acclimated with some of the controls, the shooting. They kind of teach you how things go because it'll come in handy later. As an example here, we did two action activities on the bridge and this was the last one here with Chewbacca and you're and even he's flying the Millennium Falcon which is here it comes the the Falcon's gonna buzz the Star Cruiser and also it's being chased by TIE fighters and that that's kind of what what you're doing Denise mm-hmm. you are taking care of that situation I wasn't very good at it though because <laughs> I did not participate no. I'll admit that because I was documenting all of this but tell me what it was like to actually be be helping out here it was, it was hard because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know which of those little characters I was at first. But the thing is, like, just like the other activity we had done uh, that I had done, mm-hmm. um, you know, at some point I kind of figured it out. But it took like at least half the time we were in here for me to figure it out. And then... Uh, I started shooting, even though I didn't know which one I was at first. <laughs> well, as you, you know, it's, it's kind of like a big video game and it doesn't it really just matter like because it's team building. You have so many other guests helping out and, uh, and you know, things are going to work out in the end. And Chewbacca ends up boarding the Halcyon at that point. So much of this is team building. Correct. That's very correct. So now why don't you set up what's going on here? We actually did a different activity. Well, we were in the, this is the engineering room and we did a training exercise again, a team building one we sabotaged the uh the halcyon well we right we brought down the power and that was a training ex- exercise which i didn't I totally understand at first either you know because again this is very quick going um so but you could but see here Ch- in this Ch- one chewbacca is helping them bring it back up right restore as you say mm-hmm. restore the power so it's funny it all you know everything works together in the story. Is it? I mean, I think it's going to be a very different experience doing it in two days. Right, much more drawn You know, out. where, right, a lot more explained and everything. But you can see uh, Chewbacca here in front of this, uh, the Halcyon. Um, and I this, think. we were just walking around the ship at this point. It was between our uh, activities and Chewbacca showed up. And that is, is uh, what it's like during an actual voyage, I, I was told from a friend of mine who did the full two-day experience. You know, you'll just be walking around, you'll meet a character, and it'll have it'll have importance what happens. Now, I know Chewbacca here is going to be taken, uh, taken by the First Order Stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, it's really, to me, the characters and the cast members really make the experience right and you know there are some characters and cast members i will remember now for a very long time because they were so um interesting or you know or a lot of times just excellent you know so now we're in the crown of Karelia dining room and we are going to uh, sample some of the food items and see some of the entertainment that uh, that will happen on the two nights 
And um, so this is supposed to be like for dinner is is how okay for lunch it's like a buffet, mm -hmm. um, but we are tasting. I don't know if we're tasting. I think a little from both nights mm -hmm. because they have uh, it's like a supper club at night and you have entertainment. Um, and you also have your two breakfast meals uh, in this room right. as well. And so like the second night is supposed to be an. A really terrific uh, experience. Taste of the galaxy. They taste call around that. the galaxy. Taste around the galaxy. Yes. Correct. So it, it's supposed to be fantastic. That you know is supposed to be a highlight of the whole event. I like the silverware. It was good of you to get this nice picture of the mm -hmm. of the silverware. It's actually it's really good quality silverware. Just. So we mentioned. So an evening with Gaia. That's what we are having on this night. You could see some of the food, the tibia chicken yep. and the bantha beef. I felt so bad eating that bantha beef. <laughs> it was, I love the banthas. It was, you know, the food was was I thought was excellent. So you had like the tip yip, and then there was a seared white fish. Um, the white fish is to the right, uh, it's a bit, bit out of the screen, and there is that bantha beef. The mm -hmm. bantha beef was. Did you have it? I did. It was I very had. Good. I had quite a bit of it actually. Um, and then the dessert was uh, was tasty as well. I didn't taste... Oh, I, the fish I didn't have because right. I, I don't eat fish. I um, enjoyed it. I thought the fish mm -hmm. was also very good. Um, you know, I they told us we weren't really going to have a meal, but that was really... That was a meal. Um, and then we had... This is a... Uh, icebreaker. Oh, that's it right. It was the icebreaker drink. The Hoth, drink. Hoth icebreaker, icebreaker that's with right. vodka. I enjoyed it, but I'm not as much a vodka person like... We were going to get that rum drink mm -hmm. at one point in the sublight lounge, but we just didn't have time. But it was very nice. It was it was a refreshing drink, so mm -hmm. I, I like the icebreaker. And now we're going to start the entertainment, and uh, and Gaia is about to make her appearance here. She was fantastic. So you know she does uh, interact with guests out in the atrium, mm -hmm. but then she comes in here and she just like sings her heart out, like she was amazing really and uh and everybody just was on their feet at one point except me because i was sort of <laughs> you were off I, in the corner well because of the way the table was i right. was just like i'll just sit <laughs> but uh i thought it was uh i thought this was very entertaining and the band let's not forget about the mm -hmm. band there's my good friend back there oh awani oh, yes, who indeed. you had had your picture taken uh, with earlier but this was um something like when disney did their you know some preview videos it was like well i don't know how this is going to work but when you're in in the space you know and having your meal it was really just a a, a fun time a yeah. unique a unique and i do want to mention we were in here for about a half an hour but the actual experience will be about 90 minutes and uh disney says that passengers may find listening to gaia's performance brings insight into more of the goings-on around the ship now, she is in here on that first night, so I guess, you know, if you listen to what she's saying, then... You... And plus, you'll be interacting with her throughout mm -hmm. the cruise. If you happen to run into her, you see her at the captain's, you know, the reception, things right. like that. So uh, it all depends on how much you want to put into the interaction with the characters. Or or into anything. Or with, with, or with the could, data pad as well. You could you could hang out in the in the atrium with a drink and just watch everything. So during this uh, performance, we were interrupted by the first order here, of course. Who said, get out because... <laughs> Look at all those cameras, by the way. <laughs> don't finish your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but even, even after this interruption, uh -huh. the performance continued because Gaia sent the first order you know, put them in their place and send them away for, for a while. It's funny that I, I barely remember them Well, coming. this was hard for you to see because you That's were, you were way up in the front. I actually had to leave my table and walk uh, walk a far distance to get this footage. I mean, I was up near the stage and Correct. there wasn't that much going on on the stage, actually. Gaia was all over the room and I didn't really, I and I probably didn't really see the stormtroopers. And so which much. is great, which is great because I like that she'll, anywhere you sit, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll get up close with her. So that's very good. Except if you're right at the front no, of the no, stage you, as you, much. You had plenty of time. She's heading to see you right now, Denise. Look at this. There is you. There's your table right over there in the corner. And there is Gaia we saw performing it. No, right it, by you. It's good that she made the rounds, you know, as far as like right here she is more t in front of me. Well, this is the finale when yes. everybody was standing where you were, were unable to stand. Yeah, it would have been too hard to stand for me. But uh, but anyway, I, I did enjoy that very much, as you said earlier. And I, I'm very curious to see, I'll have to watch some footage and see what happens in night number two. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, she really ruled the room. You know, she really had everybody's attention. 
So now we're going to jump around a, a little bit into the story. This is when we were up in the bridge doing a different bridge activity, the hyperspace activity. And you were elsewhere in the bridge, and I'm just like looking out the window. Yeah, this is your footage looking out the back window, and and most people didn't realize this was this was going on out there. And I, you know, this is uh, First Order Lieutenant Harmon Croy, and I'm just like, like I just was interested in looking out the window and it, I just thought it was very interesting. And if you were staying there, I mean, you could just be sitting here having a drink mm -hmm. and all of this is going on and it's kind of nice to have that intimate, uh, you know, uh, interaction if you want. Well, to me, it's like Star Wars weekends. Like Star Wars weekends, the most interesting part of Star Wars weekends for me were the characters and interactions with guests because it was always different. Um, and I just, to me, it's the same. Like if you were out, you know, in the, in the atrium, it would be very interesting to me. So now we're jumping forward here to the finale of the whole cruise. And I will set up a little bit while we were wrapping up our dinner, there was like a red alert and everybody, you know, you had the red sirens going on. It sounded like a real emergency and everybody had to, to calmly go up to the atrium. And when you got to the atrium, you're treated to a spectacular finale. And I thought that was, it was not what I expected. So I thought it was really well done. And you've got all of the all of the characters and, you know, the cast and everybody is up there. Right. And I mean, the lightsaber battle was very intense. Mm -hmm. You had, there's Kylo Ren making his appearance. You're about to see uh, another character. Yes, indeed. It'll be Rey. And uh, and Rey is going to have that, that new uh, lightsaber, the real mm -hmm. lightsaber. I just, uh, you know, everybody was really into it. And I think guests who will be, you know, on this experience will really enjoy this this battle. So while we're kind of looking at some of the highlights of the battle, let's talk about overall our thoughts on the uh, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser experience. Well, I mean, we have friends who did the two days mm -hmm. and we did four hours. So, you know, it was very it was very compressed for us and we didn't do the, the stuff like going to Batuu right. and, um, you know, seeing the transport and just having the whole experience. Right. But what I saw, you know, it was really well done. I mean, it you really need to be into like an immersive theater. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, to to I really think get the to most, get the out, most of out of it, right? You have, you I would think you have to be willing to really engage with the characters and get into the story. I was told the more you put in, the more you get back, mm -hmm. you know, to make it worth it for you. And the prices start at $4809 for two guests for two nights which includes, you know, this entertainment, your room, uh, meals, and then there was also some snacks in the lobby. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include... And valet parking. And valet parking, and also, like, your ticket into uh, into Batu, which, you know, is a ticket into the park, and but not, like, alcoholic drinks that would be extra, and merchandise is extra and such. And I know if you do four in a room, it starts at about 6000 so you can get it a little bit less per person that way. Right, especially if you're like four adults and you just want to split the experience. You know, for me, I, I really did enjoy the four hours. I mean, it was so intense. It was the mm -hmm. most intense intense Disney activity I think I've ever been involved in. And I, you know, I had a taste of it and I would like to have more. I'd like to, to go back and actually do it. But I probably would not do that unless they offer some kind of Florida resident deal or a special or something like that, at least for, for my budget. No, of course. And I feel the same way as far as, you know, I mean, we live here. So if they happen to do that, you know, it's something we'll, we'll look at. I know you probably would want to do all the activities where I would probably want to hang in the atrium and just kind of you know, sit with a drink and, and kind of take it all in. And you can do that. That's right. the good thing. You can do it either way. You could do as much or as little mm -hmm. as you want. So if you're, as you say, you are an introvert. So you mm -hmm. can just kind of sit back and relax and observe it where I might want to be more, you know, involved in the story and talk to the characters and things like that. I wouldn't mind though, like if they had put some treadmills on the bridge <laughs> so you could get, you know, some exercise, like, you know. That's an awesome effect, by mm -hmm. the way. Like when we were on the ship, like I had been at Epcot that morning, but while in those four hours, I only got like 3,000 steps. So if they could put maybe a few treadmills on the bridge, yeah. I would go through. I, I, I don't think they're going to go for that. <laughs> There's no uh, no gym in space. There could, there could be. There could be. There could well, be. Well, when you go to Batu, you'll get some exercise. That's true. But on the hmm. other, you know, at the other one times, I wouldn't mind a treadmill or a, a Stairmaster. Now, do you find this reminds you a little bit of the Adventurers Club? In a way? Well, what I had told you is I wonder if, you know, I don't, I didn't know how repeatable, and I guess it is very repeatable because 
things can happen you can differently. do a totally different story right, right. but like here you know, I don't know if anybody remembers the Adventurers Club or not, but, you know, could you throw it like the Boulder Dash Cup, you know, where you could change the outcome? So you, but you cannot can't, you can't, throw you this You can't one. do that, no. Because then it, that would, yeah, that right. would affect uh, the, the entire Star Wars storyline. Because this, again, as you mentioned earlier, it takes place between episode eight mm -hmm. and nine. So. so you can't change the, the outcome and you can't, uh, you know, I guess it's going to be generally the same, but it could be a totally different experience for you depending on what happens while you're on the And the choices the, the choices you make. Right. I would also recommend, if you're coming for a week to do a Walt Disney World vacation along with the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, to do this experience at the beginning. Because I think you'd really need a day to, to take it all in and decompress after. I mean, it's even I've talked to friends that have done the full experience. It is pretty intense if you if want you, it to be. Right. Like, you know, the four hours felt like eight to ten hours, really. It was, you know, it was tiring and and i've heard from those who've been doing the two days that it was the same for them and we're looking at some fireworks now this is part of that finale show you know i kind of think it's very disney to sort of end the experience mm. with a fireworks display i will say i am really looking forward to like okay star wars galactic star cruiser opens to, it starts tomorrow. tomorrow um and i do we do know people who will be on that first uh first voyage who paid to go, and I'm actually really looking forward to hearing what they have to say about it, you know, and if it was uh, worth it for them, and I, I think that there's people I know who it will be, because they're really into the immersive theater, um, so it'll be fun to, to hear their thoughts. And believe it or not, that is another show. That's another show. We want to thank our sponsor, MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel, who will be on that uh, yes. inaugural cruise tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to what, hearing what Becky has to say as well. Uh, so they'll be able to answer your questions firsthand uh, if you book through them. So this week we have a lot coming up. Unfortunately, we won't be here in person to see it, but the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival debuts this week. And that is my favorite time of year at uh, Walt Disney World. And But we've been covering the topiaries and uh, checking out the everything that's going on up to that. But then we're going... It's, it's not too sad because we'll be going to Disneyland Paris for the yes. kickoff of the 30th anniversary there. And we're both super excited for that. Well, I was there for the 10th anniversary. I was there during the 15th and we were there for the 25th. Which was amazing. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And uh, so and then this will be the 30th. So, so lots and lots to come for, from uh, Disneyland Paris in the in the coming days. I can't wait. So anyway, thanks again for listening. Have a great week, and we'll see you all next week. Have a great week.